Hello everyone, welcome to study table. My name is Swati and in today's video we will be talking about Agile. Okay, so there are different topics that we will be covering into this video. The first one is why was Agile introduced? Then we will look into the approaches that were used before Agile. Then why is Agile preferred over those approaches? Then we will look into the roles in Agile and also we will talk about the different methodologies that are used in Agile. Okay, so these are the topics that we will be covering into this video. So, if we talk about Agile, then Agile became popular around the 2000 and the 2002s. So, before that, the more preferred method was the waterfall model and the other approaches before that. So, why was Agile introduced? So, Agile was introduced as an approach to project management that focuses on incremental and iterative steps to complete projects. So, before Agile came into the picture, the more popular method was the waterfall model. So, waterfall model followed the path of a complete project structure all at once. So, let's say, imagine a banking application or construction application or insurance application. And the applications earlier focused on the waterfall model. So, the waterfall model created all the applications at once. That is a monolithic, more like a monolithic application. So, the application was created all at once. And when the application was deployed onto the production, then if there were some errors found or if they have to update something or if they have to add a new feature into that application, then the whole process of, of designing, development, then testing and deployment was to be done again. So, waterfall was not preferred in the later on stages or in the uh, projects that came later on that had, that do not had a fixed or a specific requirements because client can require any new thing at any time they they may change their requirements at any point of time so agile came as a rescue to that to where the all the project is not created at once and the project is here the project is breaking down into smaller cycles or smaller parts so each part is developed or each part is completed independently so it's you can call the it like a microservice application, more like microservices. So here, the project was broken down into smaller parts. So each part was given an iteration. That is, each each of the part will be developed separately. So if let's say you have to create a shopping application, so instead of creating a whole application at once, Agile breaks the project into smaller parts. So let's say you uh, in the shopping application, you'll have a different home home section. Then you'll have a payment section. Then you'll have a cart section services section so each of these sections will be developed and each of these sections will be given an iteration separately so at the end of each iteration that will involve all the cycles of the software development life cycle then the client feedback will be taken or the end user feedback will be taken so if they have to make some changes if they have to make some any kind of a new thing has to be added or something has to be removed then only that feature will be affected and all the other uh, whole application will not affect from that change so agile followed this approach and this helps out the uh, team to create projects simpler in an easier way because creating a full-fledged monolithic application and then updating that is a very time consuming and a cumbersome task compared to a project that is breaking down to smaller parts and now you have to tackle just the small part of the application and not the whole application so agile is an attempt to make the process of software development better and more effective okay so what were the approaches that were used before agile so agile was introduced around 2000 and 2002s so before that what were the approaches that were used so the original approach to project development was the code and fix development also called as the big bang so this was around 1950s and here the project was created all at once and uh, let's say if you have to get any kind of an application then the project will then the application will be created in one go and this would involve a lot of time effort and resources because any changes made will cost you a lot of effort and a lot of time so then waterfall model came in waterfall model followed the approach or followed the cycle of requirement gathering software design implementation verification and maintenance so these were the stages that were followed in waterfall model but here too there was a problem that the application created here was created all at once that is a monolithic application so here 
what happened that if one if we have completed one stage then going to the next stage is easy but if we have some other requirements to fulfill and you have to again make some changes then going back to the previous stage was very expensive and very time consuming because now we have completed our first stage so we cannot go back because this approach does not follow iteration or this approach does not follow a incremental approach so waterfall model is useful in those projects where the requirements are very clear and you are uh, the the client is very clear on what he wants and there are expectations that will no major changes will be there later on and since the requirement gathering involves a detailed requirement in uh, involvement from both the parties from the client and from the uh, company who will complete the project so kind of a construction project where you are very clear on what you want the defense based projects where the uh, where the uh, defense parties are clear on what they want the government based projects etc are based on waterfall model where the requirements are very clear and so after that when the requirement gathering is done then the software is designed more like a blueprint of what the exact product will look like and then the implementation is done verification and maintenance so waterfall model was famous waterfall model was used from the 1970s and later on also it was famous until today a lot of companies use waterfall but why was agile preferred over waterfall model when agile came into the picture why so the reason here is that agile was introduced in into the picture because waterfall model had two major problems okay here in agile development we see that the project is broken down into smaller parts and each of these parts are given a sprint or an iteration so let's if you are creating a bigger project then breaking down the project into smaller parts will be easier and easier to maintain and also easier to develop so in the waterfall model there were two major problems number one it was a monolithic application so in if the let's say if your application is deployed onto the production environment then if you have to update a new feature or if you have to add a new feature into the application then it will take involve a lot of time and also you have to update the whole application then you have to again rebuild and deploy the whole application all at once so let's say if the application is extremely large and a big sized application then it will involve a lot of time and a lot of effort to do that and let's say if the feature that you added or if the update that you made did not pass or and it failed so your whole application will crash and your application will stop working so agile for, uh, the, came into the rescue came into the picture to as an alternative which removes this roadblock and gives the application a smaller iteration or a smaller cycle to follow so let's if you are developing a new feature if you are updating a new feature then only that service will be change only so the rest of the application will not suffer from the failure of the updated feature or failure of from the failure of the newly added feature so solve the problem of waterfall monolithic issue and number uh, second was that ki if the monolithic application had to be updated then it will take time so from uh, from the time it will uh, start the update and from the time it will deploy then at that in between the application will not work so we have seen uh, messages into some sites that we will be down for maintenance or there is scheduled maintenance happening and uh, the application the site will not be available for this amount of time so this will not work in bigger organizations uh, like facebook or amazon where a lot of people are dependent on to into on to them for their services so we cannot imagine facebook we cannot imagine amazon we cannot imagine google to be down for even a minute so if they follow the waterfall approach then for a maintenance or for any kind of update to be made for any kind of changes to be done their application has to be down for some time to deploy or to update the changes so agile came into the picture to remove this issue also because only the schedule update will be done on the service that needs to be updated and not on the whole application so at any point of time your application will not stop in any point so agile was pop agile became popular because it doesn't let your application to be completely stopped number 1 and number 2 
the if the update or if the feature that you added or if any kind of thing that you did to your uh, application that is running in production then only those feature only that application will stop or it will fail and the rest of the application will not affect from it so that is why agile became more popular than the waterfall model and is now all the companies and the major companies are shifting from waterfall to agile and the they are and those who have not yet adopted the agile infrastructure or those who have not yet adopted the agile approach they are now adopting and the newer companies are building on the approaches or the implementation of agile so they are creating project based on the agile methodology all right to break the project down into smaller sprints right so now what does agile prefer since agile is a model in which each iteration learns from the previous iteration so if there is one iteration happening on to one feature that you are updating like let's say that in your shopping application you need to uh, add a payment feature then you will be add, uh, giving that uh development of you will be giving that feature a sprint or an iteration so once the one iteration is completed then a client feedback or the end user feedback will be taken if there are any changes to be made then the changes will be made and once that feature is done will shift to the next feature so each iteration learns from the previous iteration that is once one iteration is completed a feedback is taken and if any changes has to be made the second iteration will start from the end of the previous iteration so the second iteration or the next iteration doesn't start from scratch it start from the end of the previous iteration so each iteration learns from the previous iteration so since agile prefers individuals as interactions over processes and tools so the feedback is more important for agile than following a fixed process and following a, a set of tools to be followed set of tools to be used to create the application agile prefers individual interaction that is e on each after each iteration the client feedback is taken or the end user feedback is taken ki okay if he is satisfied with the uh, the uh, application that we have created then agile doesn't rely on comprehensive documentation that is how things work and how many people are working into this and what are the features that we have developed what will be developing in the near future it doesn't rely on more documentation it relies on working software if the application we have created is working and if if the client is happy with it then the methodology is okay we do not rely more on comprehensive documentation then Agile prefers customer collaboration over contract negotiation. That is, customer needs to be involved in every stage that we are doing, since his interaction will give us the feedback that we want. And uh, contract negotiation is not much preferred because and responding to change over following a plan. So instead of following a fixed plan, okay, we need we have to do this, we have to do that. Agile is a very flexible approach. That is, it takes feedback and make changes according to it. Since the meaning of agile in the English dictionary is create, uh, responding to change accordingly, so it means ki that ki agile is a flexible approach. So, if there are any changes, any feedback that needs to be taken, and you have to change the plan that you have written pre uh, before creating an application or before uh, updating something, then the changes will be implemented and the plan will be changed accordingly so say, agile is a more like a flexible approach so it prefers responding to change over following a plan okay now agile follows 12, 12 principles and these are the building blocks of what agile actually is so if any application any company any organization if they say that we are agile that they have to follow these 12 principles that is they have to look for these 12 principles number one customer satisfaction the changing requirements if any requirements are changed and they have to implement it frequent delivery the sprints are going on for two to four weeks and after every sprint then they have to deliver it and take feedback communicate regularly the client is always into the loop the end user is always into the loop so always the communication happens regularly motivated individuals face-to-face -face conversation working software development process continuous attention good design self-organizing themes now that we have seen what agile is why agile preferred and how does agile work now there are different roles in agile that we uh, that we see whenever we work with agile 
So different roles in Agile are stakeholders. That stakeholder can be anyone. They can be the product owner. They can be the manager. They can be a team member. They can be the client stakeholders. Then the product owner, the team members, and the tester. So they are all involved in the project or all, all involved in the applications that implement the Agile methodology. Okay. So now that we have seen what Agile is, why was it introduced, and what were the methods used before Agile? So now the question is, how can you implement Agile? We know what Agile is. We know how it works. We know how does it makes the project development easy. But the question remains, how can we implement Agile? So the implementation methods of Agile are Scrum, Extreme Programming, Lean, and Kanban. So these are the methodologies that are commonly used in organizations to implement Agile. And Scrum is the most popular of them and is used in majority of the companies. Okay, it's not that that if we are following Scrum that we cannot follow, you cannot use Lean, Kanban, or Extreme Programming. In most organizations, Scrum is being followed, but then they take ideas from Lean, Kanban, Extreme Programming, Crystal, and then they implement those ideas according to their organization, according to the scenarios they have. So Scrum is the most popular one the agile methodology that is most commonly used so what exactly is scrum in this video we will be not we will not be talking about scrum in detail but just an overview of that in the next video we will be covering scrum and the other methodologies of agile in detail so scrum is an agile project management framework that helps teams structure and manage their work to the set of values principles and practices so since Scrum follows the Agile methodology, it helps the team to structure and manage their work by breaking them down into smaller parts. And according to the 12 principles of Agile, the values, the principles and practices are implemented in organizations. And Scrum is one such methodology. And also Scrum encourages teams to learn through experiences. That is whatever experience they have working on the project. And once they have got the feedback, once they learn from an interaction, once they learn from an experience, then self-organize according to the problem. That is whatever problem they have, they need to organize themselves according to it. That is whatever the problem demands and what solution they have for it. They have to organize accordingly and they have to be very flexible for that. And also once, they are, once their uh, scenario or once the problem is solved, then reflect on their wins and losses to continuously improve. So based on the work that they are doing, based on the project, based on the feedback, based on everything else, whatever they need improvement, they, they should improve and work on that and reflect on their wins and reflect on their losses. This was all for this video. If you found this useful, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Please subscribe to the channel. Keep learning, keep growing. Thank you very much.